Hello, everybody. It's your boy, a.k.a. Big Drip. And I wanted to guide uh, people through kind of match meta, match strategy. If your score is X, what should you do? If the other guy's, if the, uh, other guy's score is Y, what should you do? I think that there's kind of a general meta to follow. And also, if you're watching matches, um, these are kind of things that happen, things to keep in mind. So we'll just go through each of these kind of criteria or scenarios that I have laid out, just one after the other. And then uh, I'll highlight the one that I'm going through. And we'll just go from there. So quick explanation of this chart. You're essentially looking at, this is your score. This is the opponent's score. These are all possible scores. And then these are all possible wins. And I have them colored differently and called out differently in the chart because they all have kind of different strategies or metas or mentalities, or you can make observations or distinctions about each one of these areas when you're either watching or playing a game. So we'll go for the first one. Anyone's game, pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty even up to this point. I don't, I don't think it's even, I don't think you can even say that the opponents are evenly matched at this point. You really just can't make any inferences. Um, like it can get to two, two, but there's not enough data there to let me know if the opponents are evenly matched or not. So it really is anyone's game from here. Um, so that's essentially what this is. And the strategy that I have is just scout out your opponent. Um, see, what, how, see how they're moving. See what their patterns are like. Are they having a good day? Are they having a bad day? Or is there some sort of... Uh, when I say good day or bad day, it means like, are they a little bit quicker to respond? Or are they like slower to respond? And then how is that going to affect your strategy for the rest of the match? Um, or are they trying something? Or are they experimenting with something? Are they playing to their meta? Are they playing to their standard set of techniques? If not, what's changed? That's, this is your opportunity to kind of scout that out. So if I use yellow all the time, 90% of the time at this range with matches, and then all of a sudden I'm just doing red aerials, Something's changed. And as a duelist, you need to figure out what that is and how that's going to shape your strategy going on in the rest of the match. And this is the perfect time to do it. Okay, next is yellow. So basically everything highlighted here. And what I say about this is that both duelists simply understand each other's movements. They know generally what they're going to do. They're familiar with each other's meta. And um, at this point, they're trying either their own metas or they keep moving, they keep using moves that they're comfortable with because whatever there's, they're doing, it's not causing them to get killed, but it's also not causing them to get a decisive advantage either. So, my strategy at this stage um, is you need to establish your counters. So, if your opponent feels comfortable and is fighting you the same way, all the time and it's just going one back after the other and you're kind of mashing metas into each other um, you need to establish a counter to what they're doing so if they're staying in yellow you got to think okay what's the best way that i know how to counter yellow am i going to lunge am i going to um do some red doubles poke and rolls what am i going to do this is where you need to establish counters and the same thing applies for this criteria where the opponents are really in a dead heat so it's it's beyond a reasonable doubt that the opponents are performing equally. It is, these opponents are in fact evenly matched. And I think that anything through this scoring criteria indicates that. And it means that they don't have a single strong answer to the other person's duelist style. So again, and it gets harder to establish counters at this point because you're later in the match. Establishing counters can be risky. But you still want to do that. You still want to see if you, there is a way. And it can happen at 8-8. It happened to me in a match recently where I figured out a way to counter somebody at 8-8. You got to figure out what they've been using all match long that has been resulting in this dead heat. And what you have been doing is say, wow, if, I know I've been using yellow this whole fight. Is there something I can change? Is there some way I can use a counter to get out of this meta? Um, so... Yeah, I realized that this is an error too. This should be... Boop. There we go. That makes more sense to me. Okay, and then uh, the next one is the scenario where you have a small lead. So you're talking this one, these, 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 these. 
Um, I would consider these to be advantageous leads. Maybe small is not the right word, but you, you have an advantage. You're simply performing better than the other duelists. Whatever you're doing is working. Whatever counter you have is working. You need to be consistent in how you execute them. So if something you have is working, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Like, keep executing on that same counter until they come out with a counter counter or... Um, you just have to keep doing what's whatever you're doing that's helping you be uh, successful. And then the next scenario below where you have a decisive lead is even, it, it carries that even to more of an extreme. So if you have a decisive lead, it is really a test of consistency at this point for you. Like how consistent can you possibly be in executing the same um, counters with uh, levels of proficiency, with the uh, same levels of proficiency. And then this is a typo as well. We get that. Okay, gotcha. There we go. I would put that in this category as well, 7-2. Um, so at this point, you really just need to work on executing what works successfully. And players that fall apart here, it's either because they get lazy or um, they stop performing the counter and they get full of themselves. They get a decisive enough lead that they feel they don't need to execute on that counter anymore. You need to be consistent. You need to finish the match to the end and give the benefit of doubt to your opponent, or else you could very well lose the fight. Um, I've seen so many comebacks, 8-2, 7-2, 8-1. I've given up so many fights, 8-2, 7-2. It, it can still happen. Be consistent. And now we're going to go into the small trail scenario. Simply means you're being outperformed in some aspect. Your current strategy is not working. Your repeated attempts at counters have failed. So I would put you in this camp and i would actually put this is not a small trail <laughs> there's something that's gone wrong here with my analytics so <laughs> i'm gonna be making some adjustments in real time here forgive me uh nine four uh let's see nine five let's put you in the danger zone and this is not i would put this also like this and i would put this also like this and I'll be sharing this spreadsheet in case you want to look at this. This makes a lot more sense to me. Like, 90, 10 to 5 is a pretty decisive defeat. Um, and then 5 9 is a pretty decisive loss. So that makes more sense to me. But anyway, continuing. <laughs> so if you're in this territory, I would say that you are being um, outperformed. Like, you're simply being outperformed. Your current strategy is not working. Your repeated attempts at counters have failed. And the correct strategy here, in my opinion, is to bide. So you need to get a little bit more distance, be a little bit more patient, and understand, like, you need to enter in this, like, phase of the fight again where you're trying to understand your opponent. Think, like, you have to be thinking, like, okay, something I'm doing is not working. And a lot of people at this stage will, like, spitefully kind of dig in their heels and say well fine this isn't working well, i'm just gonna keep doing it and it it's, seems silly but it's a real thing if if something is fail or something keeps countered uh keeps getting countered people might actually just dig in their heels and keep doing it until it works um i just think that that's a human bias of familiarity and no i i invite you to try something different and to wait be patient and to uh and, and to scope out your opponent again and reassess your understanding of the fight. And reassess your understanding of the duelist. Okay, and then we have decisive trailing. So right here, it's... When you're in this territory, it is highly unlikely that you are going to win the match. And you are being outperformed significantly. It's a possible mismatch. You're losing all the scrambles, and you also don't have an effective counter. That's If it gets to this point, that typically means what's happening. Um, and at this point, if you're like this and it's highly unlikely that you're going to win, I, your strategy is to learn. I think that you should, like, don't give up by any means. I don't think you should ever throw away a fight, but I think that you should learn as a, I think that you should use this as a learning opportunity. Um, especially if you feel like nothing is working and you're all out of ideas and you're all, and you tried everything and you're still getting this result. This is where you just simply have to learn, like commit to one strategy and like for example say like okay well i'm gonna use this as a chance to work on my yellow and 
see how this experimental counter works against uh, a move that you think is going to counter it. So if they're doing blue sweeps and they're absolutely annihilating you this whole fight, and it's one eight, and you but and you got killed by them five times in a row, you're going to say you're going to treat one nine and one ten or two nine two ten as a learning opportunity. You're going to say, okay, well, I keep getting killed by blue sweeps. It's too late to just re-edify an entire new strategy now. Let me see if I can counter that specific technique, the thing that's killing me most. Um, let me see if I can do that, at least. So, I think there's a learning opportunity here. And you should treat it as such. But again, I will reiterate, do not give up the fight. I mean, the, people can come back from 1 to 9, people can come back from 2 to 9, 5 to 9. It's just highly unlikely. And... Um, so that's my opinion there. The yellow. I said that an adjustment is needed to still win. So if you're right here and you keep on doing the same exact thing, and it might seem just forthcoming to just say that, it seems obvious, but you need to make a significant change in order to realistically stay in the match. So if your main style is uh, 30 red, 40 yellow, 30 blue, in terms of percentage per style, then you might need to change those weights. You got to change your style composition. You have to try a different counter because you're past the grace period of being able to try a different counter and still kind of get away from, with the experimental kind of phase of that. This is where you have to really say like, okay, I can't just experiment. I have to really pick a counter that I think is going to work or else I will lose the match. That's That should be your mentality here. Um, it's really easy for players to start giving up around here. And I think that that's completely wrong. Because coming back to here and causing a mismatch split or coming back to here and getting down this road is a lot easier than coming down here and getting through this road. Um, so I would, uh, I would just tell people don't give up if you're starting 1-4-1-5-2-5-2-6. It just simply means you need to make an adjustment. You, need, you can still very much win the match if you are still in this. It is not impossible you just need to make a major adjustment to the way that you're playing. And I think that's still possible. It's when you get to this point, it's like, okay, might be a little bit late for crazy adjustments. You can try, but it, I think you should learn it, use it as a learning opportunity. I think that's the two distinctions between here is there's still a reasonable expectation to win here. Um, that kind of goes away here. I, I think that um, most opponents in these matchups, it's, it's the other person that's going to win. And then the last thing I want to cover is the mid-match split. Um, this is this box right here. And what we see a lot of times viewing matches is they'll be perfectly even through this anyone's game grace period. Or it'll be here and then lead into here. It'll be here and then lead into here. But what happens here is an interesting thing that happens a lot of matches. It's where somebody usually pulls ahead. And they might get to here. Or they might get to here. 4 10, 10 6. 10-5, like one person stops winning. Like one person, the other duelist figures it out and they keep beating them over and over again. It becomes 10-5, 10-6. And it's usually one duel back and forth, one duel back and forth, one duel back, like it's 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, And then it'll become 10-5 or it'll become 5-10. The reason for that, I think, is because inexperienced duelists are not going to have the consistency to stay in something that works for them. They'll lose stamina or confidence or their nerves will get to them or they'll zone out and i think that they kind of lose focus here and that's how you get to this or this so this is the mid-match split area so the biggest thing you can do to avoid mid-match splits and to last the duration of an entire match is really you need to work on consistency or another word from it for it that scorp says is stamina you need to match more often. You need to make a regular match, a best out of 19, feel like a regular duel. Like, if you're entering a match and you're panicking and freaking out because it's just like, whoa, there's, whew, there's so many duels and it's so hard. And No, you need to match enough to get out of the mentality where your heart is just pounding every single time. Like, uh, it's, it's like the phases of learning how to match. It's like at first, it is super scary, it is super stressful, and whew, you need to take deep breaths and all that stuff, like all the time, heart palpitations, all that kind of stuff, but, and this is just what I've heard, and me personally, I, I, I've experienced this as well, and 
the biggest thing is you just got to keep matching people. You got to make it feel normal and you have to embrace it. And I have a whole video I made at the beginning of my channel of how to get into a good matching mentality, which I will link in the description. And that should help with some of the dueling nerves and help with the consistency as well, hopefully. Oop, typo. Let me fix that. Oop. Cool. Okay, so we got our strategy. Now let's go one level lower. Let's go to the dual level. Let's go to tactics. Okay. This is a bit of an eye chart, so I want everybody to take a deep breath. It's a lot of information, so I'm going to try to make it make sense. I will walk you through every single bit of it. Don't try to take it all in at once. And uh, I'll also link this, uh, this information in a Google Drive and link that in the description as well. So what we have here is the total possible health outlay of a base duel where you have 125 health. So this is your health going down to five and then death. 125 to five, your opponent's health up here. So if I read this chart successfully, I'll see this is 95 to 105 here. I have 95, the opponent has 105. I have 75, the opponent has 75. I have 35, the opponent has 115. And like on the prior chart, I think that there's a different strategy and a different meta for each one of these. And another way to think about this, and the best, most incisive way I can think to call this out, was to separate this into broad general stages. So stage one is here. And it's delineated by pain sounds. So your character makes a different pain sound, as many of you know, at... So they have the same pain sound here, and then when they get to 75 health, their pain sound changes. And then when they get below 50, their pain sound changes again. And then when they get to below 25, their pain sound changes to their final pain sound, which is the 25 to 0 range. Um, and there's kind of like these larger stages of a fight. So it's like, okay, I hit them a couple times. They're, I took them to quote-unquote stage 2. And so they're going to start reacting differently because their health is lower. So that's what I mean by separating it into these. And I'll try to allude to these as I go through the analysis top down. So we have our chart. We have our criteria that I'll walk you through. We have the names of these criteria that I've assigned to them. And I'll go in, in more in depth about that. And then we have your style composition. So for example, this would be 5% blue, 65% yellow, 30% red. And I think that there is a different kind of compositional meta at each one of these stages and each one of these colors. And so I'll go through that. What styles to look out for when you're in these stages. What styles you should use. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps. And then just a little bit of information. One yellow hit equals 30. One blue hit equals 24. So when I'm talking about, going back to here. So when I'm talking about like two hits win or one red, this is what I mean. If nothing else is said, two hits win means that two yellow hits win. Yellow is like the default style at the meta. 60 damage for two hits. So that's what I mean by that. And one red hit. I wanted to put, I put like a triple adderisk because it's like, it depends. It really depends. You could hit somebody, it can land for 80. It can land for 120. It could land for tw like, or it can just land for 20 if you get them with the very tip of the saber. Like, it really depends. Let's just call it a dead average of 45. So let's call it there. Could be more, could be less. I think that one day I need to make like a normal distribution curve on red hits and like distance and all that kind of stuff in the relationship to damage. But not today. So going through all of the chart now, finally. <laughs> uh, we're going to start with the white. Um, I call this just... Three or more hits to win, or two red. So at this point, it takes three or more hits in yellow, or blue, or it takes two reds. And I think at this stage, you're going to see a little bit of blue, you're going to see a ton of yellow, and you're going to see a ton of red. And the reason why I say a ton of red is because people feel a lot more confident taking risky red swings here than they do at later stages of the duel as your HP is lower. And so that's what you should expect. 
uh, kind of at this range. People are trying out different stuff. People, it's very limited risk. So people just have a different approach here. I mean, even if they go into kind of stage two, they're still like, okay, well, I still have most of my health. So they're still going to be trying red. But then something changes as we get to kind of the later part of stage two, or if you're toward the 55, the 60 health range, then the mentality starts to shift a little bit. It starts to go to two hits win or one red. So if you have 55 health, you're thinking, okay, I really need to avoid a red shot because one red shot can kill me. And so you're still going to see a lot of red. But you're also going to see a little bit more blue as people start to scramble that in and try to get some blue drags in. And people typically will start to blue sweep around here thinking like, okay, well, if I heard their pain sound or somewhere like between 50 and 60, then I know that like two or three blues will kill them. So you're going to see a little bit of an uptick in blue. And I'm actually, I might actually change this to like 15 and 55. And you're still going to see a lot of red. Um, does this add up to 100? Yes, it adds up to 100. I know that I'm probably going to make a mistake. One of those won't, but whatever. Um, okay, so we've, we've kind of covered here. I've covered here. And the same approach still applies. So even if you're at 35, 35, and you heard the, uh, the second pain sound that happens at 50 HP, the mentality is still two hits win. Because one blue hit nor one yellow hit is going to close the deal. But you're also going to see a lot of red because one red hit can kill in this range. And uh, I just realized there's something wrong with the chart. There should be more, there should be like a green sliding scale up here. So for example, one hit wins and it's decisive. No, this is fine. Okay, cool. Never mind. <laughs> Just getting confused by my own chart, apparently. So we were at this stage right here, which is kind of like stage three, or we're still in like two hits win. And when I say two hits win, we're thinking two yellows. Because if I hit a yellow and somebody has 30 HP, it's not going to kill them. If I hit them with a blue and somebody's at 35 health, it's not going to kill them. You need two hits. So... A lot of higher level players when they enter the stage just think, okay, two hits will kill me. Or I can kill somebody in two hits after I hear the second pain sound. So the second pain sound can act as a cue to say, okay, well, I just need to hit him with yellow twice. Or with red once. So that's the mentality here. And then things change as we go into stage four, which is this whole area here. So as we go to stage four, we cover kind of the extremes. So if you're up here, you just need to think one hit wins. So you're going to stay, a t you should be using a lot of blue, chasing with red, and then a little bit of yellow. Because you're looking to just finish off an opponent. Is If this is you right here, then this is your meta. You're using a lot of blue. You're using, some, you're using some yellow. If you have a huge lead, just try to finish with blue. Like, finish it. Like, blue's quick enough. You're going to catch them in a mistake. They're going to be trying to get distance and use red and stuff. Just chase them down and try to kill them. But then also be aware that they might be aware that you're doing that. And so that plays into a different strategy altogether. But this is generally the meta. If you have a decisive lead on HP, and you've heard the third pain sound, and you know they're at 25 or below, then just just try to finish them. Either one yellow, um, a quick blue, or you try to reach them with a red and get some aerial going and chase them down, because they're probably going to be evading you at this point. And then as we go into this evenly matched scenario, this is the one hit wins for either person, and it's decisive. You almost rarely, if ever, see red here. You're going to see a lot of opponents circling each other, a lot of, like, caution, and one small mistake and you lose. That is stage four, when the opponents are evenly matched. Is one, so both opponents have heard the, the third pain sound of each other. 
They know they're below 25, and so they're circling and scrambling with each other to try to get a blue hit or to try to get a yellow hit. It, either or is going to kill them. So it's extreme caution. Whoever gets this hit wins. So if you're at this HP and you're swinging red openly and you're trying to reach them the same way you would if you had high health, you're doing something wrong. I, you can try to use red to surprise them. That's what I like to do. Um, but I also have a ton of experience using red in scrambles. Um, you're just going to see a ton. This is all yellow and blue at this stage. All of it. I very rarely, if ever, will see a red. And if it is, it's like a, a, it's a big gamble. Um, because it leaves you open. And then we're going to move into this scenario here. Where you are in stage four. Basically, the opponent has heard your third pain sound. You're down by a lot, or you're down modestly here. So what do you do with this? What does your style composition become? What, you sh what should you try to do? So if you're in a scenario where you have super low health, I think that you should be in 5% blue, 60% yellow, 35% red. And you think, well, wait, Glorp, you just said that if you have low health, you shouldn't use red. But here's the problem. If you have super low health, your chances of one-tapping an opponent in a scramble with yellows until they have comparable HP. So, for example, if I have 15 health, it's going to take three yellow hits, three successful yellow hits to get my opponent down to my same level of health without taking damage myself. Huge risk. Okay? So, what you want to do, and what makes sense sometimes, is you be patient, you bide, and you try to land a solid red shot because that's going to help close the gap and shift you more into this territory. Shift you more right in this chart. <coughs> and then, so when you have super low health, again, I think that you should avoid blue. It, it, the thing is blue, you're going to get your saber deflected out of your hands super easily. And... It has very weak defense. And it's very likely that either an opponent's red or a yellow, when they have that much of an advantage, is going to smash right through your blue guard and kill you. I, I encourage most players to almost never use blue in this scenario. Um, and then one hit loses caution. The same thing, but a little bit less extreme. If you're here, you want to insulate yourself a little against risk by staying in yellow, staying in something more balanced. I would still recommend red to try to close the gap or potentially even get a kill like in these scenarios but you should be like more cautious with red in this limited risk scenario because it's like you don't need a red to necessarily completely close the gap here like you got to try to get like a couple yellows instead if you can but so that's why it's like much higher priority to try to get yellow like, protect yourself, but also realize that one red can end it here. Um, so that's why the composition shifts. And so that goes through the entire chart. So to quickly recap, stage one is when you, you are still making the 100% health pain sound to your opponent. Your, your opponent thinks you have full health. They think that you have a healthy amount of HP. And then when we get to 75, you've taken a hit, or your opponent's taken a hit, and you're thinking, oh... Okay, so, whew, deep breaths. I gotta take this a little bit more seriously. I gotta, I gotta, you know, sh I gotta change my composition a little bit. I have to blend more uh, yellow in. I have to go less risky maneuvers. I have to protect myself a little bit. And then that trend of protecting yourself and evasion and being careful kind of tr continues as we go down chart, right? So in this direction, it's like protection increases. In this one, it's like head hunting, aggression, pressing, taking up floor space. That becomes more of the priority here as you look to finish the duel. And this is essentially how the composition changes over time. So at the beginning, maybe not so much blue. Makes a lot more sense to stay in yellow and red here. And also something interesting to take away from this that I just realized is if you have a lot of trouble here, it's probably because your, co your composition is not matching this. It's probably because you're trying red when your health is super low or you don't have a strong enough blue, or you don't have a strong enough yellow. So that's why you're losing all the matches with low HP. And then similarly, if you're losing all the matches when you have low HP, which, you know, 
it's tough to come back, but if if you notice that you're getting quote unquote like finished off a lot, or you just think like, wow, well, if I have low health, it's pretty much over. I I don't even know why I try at low health. If you think that, then I think the problem is you might be trying things that are too risky. Uh, you're not being patient enough to look for a good opportunity. Um, you're going for blue shots and regular scrambles instead of more careful single taps. And so I think if you're thinking that, I think that um, you should true up your composition to something a little bit more meta like this. And again, these are just recommendations, so you don't have to listen to it. It's just personally what I see and what my attitude is. And um, if I really wanted to bias this toward myself, I would definitely up all of these red values in every single category. So I'm just trying to take into account what the average player should consider. Um, and then if you're in this range, you should be thinking two hits win. One hit, one red hit, or two hits. So if you have 45, you should be thinking, okay, the opponent needs to hit me twice or I lo and I'll lose. Or if you're thinking, okay, you heard this pain sound, and you know that you heard this pain sound, then you hit them again, and they still have that pain sound, you're thinking, okay, two hits win. I only hit him twice with yellow. I only hit him once with red. So still, blue is not going to be as prominent of a factor in this range. So I think that for each of these areas, if you have a, I think it's a, I think it's an opportunity that if you notice you're getting finished off a lot, or you notice you can't finish jewels a lot, it might be because your composition's out of meta. And you you could try following this kind of average composition meta that I have here. But anyway. I'm going to leave it there. Um, if you have any more questions or input, leave, leave it in the comments below. Message me on Discord. And I'll prov be uh, providing a link that anyone can use to view this sheet on, uh, through a G Drive. And I'll be linking that in the description. Thank you so much. And I'll check you later. Peace.